All righty then, we're back again in the studio segment of the ESL Interpretation. Okay, I wanted a woozella. I think a production <laughs> just went like. Ha, what? I think a production just went like. Ouch. No, that was that me. That was really loud. That was me. I know, but that was really loud. Anyway, I see you're excited because of this amazing game that we have. Yes. In the past. It's Dota 2. Yes, and indeed. And it's going to be Dota Nepal 2. versus Bangladesh casted in India. Yes, it's like a triangle. It's like Nepal is here, yeah, and the Bangladesh is here. Yeah, casted uh, in Mumbai, produced in yeah, India. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's, but it's still in India. Yes. Like casted and produced in India. So it's like, it's literally like Nepal, Bangladesh. It's and servers are in Singapore. <laughs> triangles but again ladies and gentlemen we have Dota 2 just like uh, Angie said uh, it's team Akatsuki versus the council who are going to have a showdown against each other today but before we head off head off into the game and the team introductions let me remind you who all are bringing this amazing tournament to you I'm talking about people like Omen by HP HyperX and Intel and of course the other people who like to be behind the scenes I'm talking about not in gaming and ESL India because they're camera shy and they're like ah we'll just be behind the camera we'll just let them do the We'll just we'll just let them do the stuff. We'll just you know we'll put like God Slayer there. We'll put Angie there. Uh, sometimes a little bit of masala and like a salt bay magic kind of thing. We'll put alcoholic <laughs> there, stuff like that. So yeah, I think I think I I overstepped that invisible line there. But <laughs> do not fret, ladies and gentlemen, because we are going to begin with the team introductions right about now. The teams are ready in the lobby. So let's quickly uh, get done with the introductions. I'm talking about Team Akatsuki first. Angie, you were making a point. Yeah, so two of the players which were shown, they're actually not playing in the team <gasps> anymore. Uh, they're playing with two stand-ins, uh, which fit into the fourth and the fifth role. <laughs> so that is extremely Salons. sad. I feel really Do bad Do not speak not in front of the king. Otherwise, I'll feed you to my children. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, oh. Just kidding. We are vegetarian. Yes. <laughs> I just wanted to do that. Okay, so anyway, so talking about that. Team Akatsuki, there are yes. two players, the fourth and the fifth, who play for them, yes. the support and uh, the secondary support, fourth and fifth role. They're not playing in the team anymore. So they are playing with two standards, mm. which is one of the mm. major reasons why they are They are, they are also losing that. Akatsuki, yeah, yeah, Team Akatsuki, what, I've, I've seen losses. them play uh, last year also, yeah. 2016 also. And the, and, and the lads are good. They're not bad, yeah, bad. They're, they're good. They're, they're good. good when they sync as five and uh, their strength was that they all knew each other really mm. well. They all understood each other's gameplay. We used to have amazing gangs coming in from Axel who was in the offlane. But right now the problem is that there is no sync and with Akatsuki not having that sync, they're no longer the same team. And I think that's why right now they're struggling on the ninth position. They've been able to secure only two victories. They've made five losses for themselves but today could be the day where things change for them they are going against a team that is sitting right below them team council so let's see more about them and uh, yeah yeah let's 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 put uh, faces to the name that council Okay, just in case if you're wondering why I'm laughing like a monkey, because I got called a monkey by my production. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Silence. Anyway, so Team Council, <laughs> as we know them, they are from Bangladesh. They sit 10th on the board as of now. They secured one victory, but have faced five losses, and they're very important for them to win this game for them. Very imperative for them to win this game. In fact, yeah. uh, uh, I'm pitting my hopes against uh, the council, with the council. Yeah. Um, a, they're good friends. B, they are a good team. Yeah. C, I believe that they have it in them to make a huge difference in their games. I don't know. I personally believe that when Zunun's brother used to play, yeah. uh, when when Len used to play with them, when they used to play, uh, if you remember, the Skyrath, the Skyrath games. Chen, the Jin and the Len that, that That, that Skyrath-Chen gameplay was something which, you know, drew me to the game. Yeah. I, think I wanted to watch them play. 
I believe somewhere because of Zunun's brother leaving for further education, I, I believe the team is also slightly in a disarray. But I think, but I think they'll reign supreme this time. In fact, uh, the, the 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 draft, draft is, is live. live. Omni Knight, Leshrac, and Tusk have been banned by the council. Akatsuki goes ahead, bans Chen and a Visage that. and a Pit Lord. And in turn, they've picked a Rubik, that, that is for the council, and a Shadow Shaman for Akatsuki. Akatsuki, again, planning to go into the strategy of a five-man push. Now, my worry in this draft is it's not what Akatsuki picks. Yes. They have a beautiful set of heroes that they already planned before they're entering into a game. Like last time, we did see them play with the Bloodseeker. But the issue that they face is that they are not coordinated enough anymore. And if that is what pits in the draft, then I see council having a much higher chance of taking this game. Definitely. Game. I'm, I'm, I'm really interested and keen to see how the council, uh, you know, uh, uh, makes their picks because, like, like half the battles decide whether, whether when the drafts happening. You need to, you need to know your heroes well. Yeah. Sure, there are 122 heroes to pick from, but you, sure, you can play all of them. Yeah, but you always but which ones can you play better? Yeah. It's about you know, what you're confident with. And I also know the council like to play the Pugna. So if they have to pick the Pugna in this game, it will be an interesting matchup to come in against them. They also have the Sand King available in the pool who decide to go with that. Witch Doctor Luna, one of their other favorite pickups in uh, a normal ESL game that they like to play. Mm. But the Rubik being a very versatile hero, they can be sent in the mid lane if council wants that. Also in a support role. That also makes sure that Akatsuki can't really go for a very AOE kind of lineup. Because if Rubik steals something, like even the Rashta Serpent was. That's what I was just about to say you just stole my yeah. thoughts i was literally visualizing like serpent wards getting stolen and then like countered uh, like used yeah. against Akatsuki them. So they would have nothing in fact uh, clockwork has been uh, uh, picked up by the council there that's mostly going to be a secondary support coming there from council they like that tank they also like to take two gangs uh, in general within the first 15 minutes is make sure they get those uh, two man gangs around the map council could also send this in a 2 1 2 lineup and not really give the opening to katsuki to give their main farmer who is going to be mostly madra uh, much space to farm and if they're able to capitalize on madra not getting in a farm council could really finish this game in a very early stage but as we say of that i mean Ka akatsuki is still looking to make their yeah i believe i believe akatsuki could go for a Night Stalker. Um, Definitely. A, a def because Be I've, I've seen well Akatsuki Night use Night Stalker before, I, and I think they are pretty good. With uh, they the used to use a Night Stalker on a different player. So that is where the issue again occurs. If uh, they do if they have actually trained their new fourth role to play it the same way, I think we could see a beautiful Night Stalker play yep. coming in from them. They also like to pair the Night Stalker a lot with the Luna. Yeah. So if they work with that combination also, Akatsuki could do really fine. But they're taking quite a while on this pickup. It's going to be the Sand King coming in there from Akatsuki. And a good pick for them, mostly going to either be an offlane Sand King or even mostly a jungle Sand King. He could get that quick blink dagger, maybe start ganking a little bit with that Shadow Shaman in the early stages of the game. That also says in the mid Lane, they could opt to pick up the razor. They've not really banned him out for now, but the viper. But the viper and life stealer banned. getting banned. Yes. Like a life stealer just came and as a part reply to the viper ban there. I, it I, works I like very that. well. It works very well with the clockwork because if we find an infest bomb with the clockwork, he gets a perfect hood shot into anybody, and that's going to be devastating for the council. So Akatsuki just making sure that you know they don't really have that life stealer to deal with. The council replying to that with an OD, and uh, that also means that I mean banning the OD and the viper in the first two. Uh, uh, seems a little worrisome to me because then council is going for some kind of hero in the mid lane that kind of gets completely uh, destroyed by these two heroes. That could only be the Skyrath Mage. I mean, if we see a Skyrath Mage or a Queen of Pain in the mid lane, their worst opponents to play against them is the Viper and the OD. But that also says that Razor is still available, but Akatsuki going to just quickly ban out that Kunkka. I wasn't really hoping to see council play the Kunkka because they are already almost picked up yeah. uh, their first two roles. The Tide Hunter could be a very good pick coming in there for council. True. So they're going to take some time. We are reserved time on the clock. We still have a lot of heroes that could fit into their draft. The Tinker, of course, being another one in the mid lane that Council could work with. Jakiro could fit in if they decide to send uh, the clockwork in the off lane, but I doubt they are really looking into picking up the Jakiro. Council going to take some time with this I'll pick. I'll be damn happy if they pick up a Jakiro there. I'm waiting. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like low, nervous. I'm like trying to channelize my energy. And wait and Council see. also likes to play the Invoker, by the way. They like to drop the Invoker in the they mid do? lane. Yes, they do. 
And that works very well with the clockwork because once he gets that cog off, the sun strike area becomes very the easy for uh, Invoker to kind of get this first two, three kills in the early stages of the game. They also like to play, but as we speak, the Shadow, Shadow Fiend, Fiend gets picked up over there by the Council. And I think now this makes a lot of sense for banning out the Viper and the OD because the Shadow Fiend kind of gets destroyed against such pickups. So for now, sh Council showing off what they have in the mid lane. And going up against the Shadow Fiend, we have a lot of great heroes that can work very well against other than the Viper and the Ori, the Razor has still not been given that much importance in this draft. Also, the Puck is still available if they opt to pick up that in the mid lane. But it's going to be they the go Wind for Ranger. a Wind Ranger there. It's going to be dreamy mostly on the Wind Ranger if that's a mid lane Wind Ranger. I could also see a Wind Ranger going as a carry. There are a lot of options for her. She has the mobility, she has the and damage. She's been buffed recently. She's been buffed quite a bit. Her power shot does quite a lot of damage in the early game, which also means that if she's sent in the mid lane, she could get a lot of farm against the SF, which is needed because. Normally, the SF is the one that dominates the mm, mid lane the because mid -lane it gets there. the early farm. But uh, Akatsuki going to make sure that that does not happen for the Shadow Fiend. The so they are going to make a counter pick to ensure that SF doesn't get uh, that easy farm in the middle lane, I believe. Definitely, definitely. And now Council looking to pick up their off lane and mostly their carry. Now, if they decide to go something very tanky, which they need in their off lane, it could either be a Tide Hunter, they could also opt to go for the Elder Titan. Now, this yeah. is one of the pickups that people have not really been concentrating a lot. I've seen. Um, Wow, oh, it's going to be the Enchantress. I like the pickup. Now, Council, you don't give them the Chen. They will find another way to control those creeps. And it's going to be the Enchantress for us who's going to be doing the same. I'm going to love this uh, pickup, by the way, because he does some impeccable things uh, on heroes where he has to control different units. So, Council going to make sure. And plus, Enchantress has been fitting quite well uh, for most of the team. She's got a lot of damage output. She can slow. She can take down towers. She's really versatile in uh, her pick. So, Council going to just play safe. They know what they want. And... Uh, they looking very strong here. Akatsuki, got to be careful now. They got to work out what is going to work for them. They do need a very heavy duty tank. They could also opt to go for the Juggernaut since he's not really banned out as of now. The PA, of course, still available if they opt to go for the PA. But where I doubt is they'll be picking up a PA. I don't, I don't see an Akatsuki with a PA with this lineup. They would have gone for a Jaro. I was about to say Jaro copy, yeah. in fact. Because it's been about it's about time we saw a gyro in game. Yeah, I mean, uh, but you know the thing about the gyro is that he's very nowadays in um, after the 7.1, but he's very situational because mm. if you don't get him that early bunch of farm, he kind of struggles a lot to get that, and then you gotta like drag the game to about 45 minutes to 60 minutes where he's like a full fledged, uh, fat gyrocopter. But that also makes me question that I don't see an anti mage nowadays. Where yeah, I haven't seen an anti mage yeah. for quite for quite some and time. He's one of uh, one of those really crazy heroes because you can get a lot of split push from him. You can't. Really and the talent and the easily. talent trees are uh, the the the. the the image you leave behind when you, yes. when, you when you blink that is like that is, so that bad is that's insane. like Manta so style waiting to happen. I'm hoping to see I mean until now in the ASL India Premiership we haven't really seen an anti-mage pick up at all I, I hope that at and least we get to see an anti-mage in the land finale but uh, Juggernaut getting banned by Katsuki and avoid the banned by the council leaves us with the last picks for this draft Katsuki is still looking to hmm. pick up their final hero that's going to be in the off lane they could also opt to go for the undying as a matter of fact but it's going to be the tide hunter and uh, with that Katsuki have their open with the Tide Hunter Ravage, they have the sh Shadow Shaman to make sure the Serpent Wands get dropped. They have the Sand King Ulti, they have the Wind Ranger just to do that minimum amount of damage and the Gyrocopter to complete their draft. But Akatsuki is still, do you think even though that draft could go is with good. the Undying. Uh, they could opt to go for the Undying, but I doubt. I doubt. think they're going into more of a 2 1 2 scenario. Yeah. So they still got to pick up one more heavy duty carry for themselves. I'm hoping that they pick up the Anti Mage, but it also could be a Luna. They're very well fed on the Luna. They like to play uh, so many heroes that I could think of. Even the Meepo could be an option, but, but they, they got to pick up the Razor. So Council looking much stronger in Akatsuki yeah. when it comes to the draft phase, because even if Akatsuki managed to do everything that they have on their plate right now, Council can still withstand that. And in the place of a clockwork, if they had picked up something like the Abaddon, uh, they would have had a full-fledged, we are never going to die kind of draft. Yeah. And uh, just looking at the drafts, I feel that Council have a better uh, setup for the for the game that they're going to be playing right now. But Akatsuki, if they can pull this off, which I hope they do, uh, I think Akatsuki could take this game too. Yeah. Well, well, that's it for the draft there. Let's quickly head off into the game and see what's in store for us. Vivek, Vivek, Venkat, Raman all set to take us through the game. So over to you, gentlemen.
Hello folks and welcome back to the ESL In-Depth Mirrorship. This is the 2018 edition. We're in the summer season phase one. We got Akatsuki facing off versus the council. Both teams on the bottom half of scoreboard fighting uh, for a slot at the land near Floki. Akatsuki, they're sitting at um, six points when the council are at these. So Akatsuki actually working with an advantage and they'll want to pick it up. Well, we'll see if we, they can carry this advantage on. Uh, speaking of drafts, uh, let's let's have a talk about that. Whose draft do you seem to be favoring more at the moment? Um, Akatsuki's. Yeah, I have to say the same thing. I can't. I, I look at the council's lineup, and the first thing I notice is the lack of lockdown. You sure you have the clockwork? Sure you have uh, the Rubik? That's about the only thing you have working in your favor. I mean, yeah, you can do the Skog trick, get yourself a bunch of souls, but. You're still gonna struggle to catch heroes, and I think that might yep. be a problem, especially with the Enchantress. It doesn't really scale towards the mid game in terms of uh, the control she provides, but more in terms of damage. And if you look at, if you look at the lineup of a uh, uh, council, they have damage. Damage is not a problem for them. Catching heroes is. So yeah. It's gonna be a big problem for them to chase heroes perfectly. I think maybe that gets himself yields, drums, that kind of a move speed oriented build, so just so you can keep onto these heroes and. Make some quick work of them while it's a uh, small split pushes. Yeah, I, I had a couple of things to note about the draft. Firstly, you're doing Clockwork Shadow Fiend, right? Mm -hmm. That, he, I mean, it's something you're doing so that you secure the mid lane. And, and they're doing it perfectly well. They're giving Susmoy all the souls. But even then, even then, they banned out both the OD and the Viper. Mm -hmm. So they aren't sure about this. Uh, down bottom, shit. he's got to be careful. He's put his first point into Enchant and he's going to end up falling. August. Well. Drawing first blood there. Yep, the Shadow Shaman hitting the gym and bashing Jin's head in. 75 pace damage at level 1, that's absolutely ridiculous. Yep. Hopefully Ice Rock patches that, I mean, it's so ridiculous. It's, a, it's literally impossible to trade against Shadow Shaman at level 1. There's no hero in the game that can trade against the not, Shadow Shaman. Not, not even the Tide not, Hunter, not even the Viper. Yeah, maybe Jin with the Newt can, but... Yep. Just, just by itself with the Bounty Room, no he can't. Yeah. Uh, one thing I want to point out about the mid lane, the council came and dropped this ward on the high ground. I think Akatsuki should have seen the Rubik plant that ward as as a support. When when you get your ward down first, you want to look for the other the other mid laner's ward and you want to get a D ward up. Uh, another thing that I want to point out about this draft is this Tide Hunter pickup. Um, I'm, I have mixed feelings about the Tide Hunter. I'm not saying it's a bad pick by any means. It just means that you're kind of reliant on your cooldowns. And you spoke of how the council didn't have catch. Oh, what yep. what would have been an off laner which would have pretty much accomplished the same thing that a tide hunter accomplishes, but just would have been a lot stronger in the lane. I well, I personally feel they could have picked up today. the puck. Uh, yeah, well, they could have picked up the puck for sure. But puck is also somewhat cool out reliant. You know what would be really good against uh, the lineup of the council? It'd be the axe because. You see, there's a lot of damage available on both sides. Uh, most of the times, Enchantress is probably going to keep the Impetus on Autocast. If she doesn't, then good for her. But right. 9 times out of 10, the Shadow Fiend gets called, he's going to die. The Razor gets called, he's going to die. Anybody gets called on the side of, uh, I mean, uh, Council, they're just going to die. Uh, Midlane, they're going to like try and bring Shadow Fiend is down the die. Shadow Fiend. Yeah, they've got the power shot, so smart. Has the Fairy Fire, but resetting the Shadow Fiend, forcing him to come back to the lane. Without all the souls is huge for Akatsuki. Yeah, I mean, top, they're trying to punish Axel here. They've got him with the telekinesis. The Dark Troll Summoner is there. He doesn't have the insnare, but they've got the damage. Yep, Council manages to find that kill. That's finding a good start there. The problem they... is that Dets is not actually doing well in terms of last hits. He's 4 and 3 for a safe lane, which is not that great, but not hopefully idea. catches up. And the wave is pushing in for that as well, so... Oh, I mean, decoy has a fairy fire. It's gonna be okay. Got triple race there, almost. I think decoy is... I mean, his name pretty much indicates that he is the standard. I think he's standing in for Dreamy? No, Dreamy's playing the Sand King. Who's he standing in for? Not really sure. Yeah, well, I don't know either, but... Either way, yeah. so Smoy is still Akatsuki. doing somewhat well in the mid lane. Has a experience advantage over Wind Ranger despite that kill onto him. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to point that out. That's the power of the Shadow Fiend with the Cogs level one. And now, this Wild Wing Gripper in the mid lane is not going to make things easier. Although it is going to go down in ten seconds. That's when the enchant expires. 
he can in no he's not going to be able to enchant it again he's not even planning on yeah. enchanting it again uh, level one and I have to say one thing though, it is that going into the late game, Akatsuki uh, have to be feeling a lot more confident than the council because sure the council you have damage potential but then you just look at the wind range that doesn't care too much about the untouchable from the enchantress. You also look at the heroes like the gyrocopter and realize you have just so much AoE damage you can just pop your yep. BKB and not give too much not care too much about the Shadow Fiend. It's probably gonna go magical damage this game. Mm -hmm. Would be surprised if he does something else to be honest. Well, nice cogs coming out from Lost Rider with the Hadouk creep. They'll try and punish the shaman. He gets knocked back by the cogs, but he's still gonna survive. Dreamy with the power strike here, and Madara even pops the flak cannon. Akatsuki won this, but they're gonna lose the shaman courtesy Jin and that creeper face and animal is here. The telekinesis controlling Dreamy. Dreamy gets a one last power strike. They're gonna find the trade, they'll find the clockwork, but Jin gets a double. I mean, Jin is just. Well, this is the Jin show. Finds a creep, starts killing heroes, not too surprised there. Yeah, but I think the rotation from the Rubik was risky for him to find that kill. Uh, if Animal didn't rotate, uh, they might not have found that second kill. Yeah, top lane, Axel having a bit of a rough time on his Tidehunter here. Yeah, I wouldn't be too surprised to see if he just hits the jungle, gets a Quelling Blade. I think it'd be in his best interest to do that at the moment because against the Strazer, he's not going to be getting any creeps. Oh, bottom lane. Not even bottom lane, Shaman oh, yeah, that's just, just a... walking towards the rune ends up dying and up top seems as if Dreamy wants to punish this racer. Animal, he's lagging behind and CS, a death on him would be costly. They're gonna run him down, they don't have the clutch for a bit, but the bottom strike coming off cooldown in a matter of seconds. The question is, dang, and can the council really find a trade anywhere else? And they're not gonna find too much. Dreamy, I mean, getting active are... on the sand. Yeah, the Razor shouldn't really be dying in this matchup, to be honest. I'm surprised how that even happened. Yeah. Axel, sure, he has a point in Gush, but he should be zoned out to the point where he can't even come up to you in lane. Like, if he comes up, this guy should be dying. The Waterman should not survive against the Razor. Absolutely. Because it, it makes complete logical sense, too. Waterman is a 70% water. And At mid, trick. though, they're gonna try and finish the Shadow Fiend. They've got the Shackles, and this. This is a new and renewed Akatsuki lineup that's found its purpose in the laning phase. Oh yeah. And uh, I think I think one of the strong suits of the council is that they're extremely strong as far as the lanes are concerned themselves. And they, I mean, for now Akatsuki, they're trading even. Remy, well, he went searching for that bounty rune, but won't really get access to it. Jin tries to contest Akatsuki's bounty rune. Can I just point out that Dreamy is actually doing so much better on his Sand King than he has in any other game. 6 <laughs> minutes in, he is 780 gold. And by the 14 minute mark, if he doesn't die a single time and just picks up a few bounties, he'll actually have his blink. Yeah. Jin, I mean, he controlled the bounty runes, but he didn't bother to look at the power-up rune. I mean, when you're in support and you're usually chilling on one of these side lanes, you want to keep tabs on the power-up runes. And I don't think the council know that there's a sand king just shilling it made with an invis rune. Fortunately for Susmoy, Decoy, he's goofing up all his spells. The power shot off the mark, the shackles off the mark. Yeah, one way to get the power shot off at the right time is to wait for the Shadow Fane to go for a last hit and try to figure out when he's gonna come in for a last hit and then it's when you start to channel up the power shot and guarantee a power shot to the face. And I'm surprised that Susmoy didn't get himself a pair of raindrops. I think he might be fairing it out now. Wait, he still doesn't, so... Has Decoy got raindrops? Yeah. Yeah, Decoy does need a raindrops in this matchup. I mean, any mid laner, as soon as the Shadow Fiend hits level 5, get those damn raindrops, man. Otherwise, you're gonna be dying if you start trading right clicks with Shadow yeah. Fiend. Akatsuki, they're prepping for the bottom lane. Lost Rider walks a bit too far ahead. The homing missile is there. August will set up with the shackles. I got the rocket barrage. This should be an easy kill for Akatsuki in August. This secures the kill. Oh yeah. I mean, both these supports having a really good start on the side of Akatsuki, uh, and uh, on the side of Council as well. The supports having a rather decent start. Jin, I'm not sure, man. Like Jin is, I don't know what Jin is to be honest. If he's a support, if he's, he, he, I, I mean, he's he's a role fluid. I guess you can say. Yeah, he's role fluid. Um, whatever role he's meant to be playing this time around, he hasn't found too much success. The Sand King is actually doing better than the offlane of Council. And the uh, Tidehunter is actually <laughs> in the bottom parts of the network, to be honest. 
it's eight minutes in, has boots and uh, cutting blade, a couple of mangoes. That's it. I think Axel should really move. I on think to the important part is that uh, that he's hit level six and oh yeah, that's the rabbit. I, I, I mean, as an offlaner, you want to keep tabs on the enemy offlaner's levels as well. You have an advantage. Go make use of it somewhere across the map. But he might get picked off. Now, now Akatsuki know that Axel is being dove upon. And yes, this is exactly what they should do. Try and turn around. Try and punish this. That's just got 182 has. stolen damage. Decoy even comes in. Do they want the Razor or do they want the Rubik? They'll get the Shackle onto the Razor. They'll commit the Ravage. Animal barely out of range. A lot of spells being committed. But this is a death on the Razor. And I think it's completely worth it. Oh yeah. Akatsuki perfectly. Realizing that this race has stepped a bit too far forward, TP and punish him. And that's a lot of gold going the way of August. Once again with the Shadow Shaman. And the Shadow Shaman, he is scary if he gets farmed. Oh, mid lane. Oh yeah, a little bit of action in the bottom lane as well. There's Decoy with that focus fire. Just dancing about the mid lane. Circling around Sysmoy, but being controlled by the Rubik and ultimately going down. Oh yeah. Lost Rider has it level 6. Could heal back up with the salve and go in for the hook shot. Murara cannot survive this because he doesn't have bone charges. Yeah. Okay. But I think the supports on the side of Akatsuki have got TPs, no? August, his TP. Well, he, he, I mean, he could buy a TP if he wants to. Yeah, but I don't think he will. Uh, okay, so yeah, as I was saying, the Shadow Shaman is a really strong split pushing force, and if you look at the side of um, the council, the only hero who can really deal with the split push is the Shadow Fiend. I mean, sure, you can have Rocket Flesh and deep push the lane, but it's not going to stop the Shadow Shaman from pushing the free wave into your tower and dropping the Up top, Axel being run down. This nice, time, man. he doesn't have the ravage, but he's okay. Down bottom, though, that's where the council looked to strike. They pop a smoke, they've got Madara with the telekinesis. He's in the cogs, and Madara will end up falling. Oh, he's yep. got to make a slight adjustment to his items. I mean, he skewed up the drums. Could go for the drums first, but he's got to recognize that he needs a four staff just uh, to stay away from the clockwork. And this clockwork putting in some real work in there as he controls Dreamy, pushes him off the cliff. But Dreamy with the bar is going to be okay. August just securing his retreat to that hex and Akatsuki they lose their gyrocopter. And and this is why Floki asked if these two supports have TPs because they've got to be able to respond and keep their cores alive. They were just chilling at mid. The Sand King got carried away, wanted to farm his blink. I, I don't think the death on the gyrocopter is the end of the world, but they could have it prevented it, does is it. what I'm saying. Yeah, I agree. I think Madara could also probably got himself treads over the face boots. It helps you stay alive against the clockwork, and I think really, in the first 15 minutes against the clockwork, as a gyrocopter, your intention should be to survive. Uh, face boots, sure, they're great for chasing and everything, but if you don't survive, you're never going to get the damage out, and 9 times out of 10, that hookshot is going to be safe for you. So the clockwork is going to give you the special delivery right in the face, and... Uh, you better pray to God that your team helps you back uh, around that time and you can get the counter kill on clockwork. Madara's also got a nice little stack to clean up. They're going in actually. Quick power strike, call down, committed, lost rider. Well, he might end up falling, but it's Dreamy who falls to the Hadouken coming up from the Saturn. And the council, they're holding on important. They keep keeping the clockwork alive. Decoy moves in, quick hook shot onto the side, decoy. He doesn't have the wind run, he's got to be careful, Animal walks a bit too far ahead, the Rocket Barrage doing work, August, with that one right click will secure the kill, Decoy manages to make it out of there in the nick of time, but Susmoy with the double damage is going to clean up, August turns around, looks for the Shackle, but he's going to die mid Shackle, and up top, looks like the Tide was being chased as well, I mean... Deaths is just on the side hunters, but oh, down bottom though. So smart. Overstate is welcome. The shackle will not connect, but they'll bring down so smart. Oh, that's a big kill for Decoy. He's not been doing too well in the mid lane, but he has his face boots now. Also has the focus fire. So if Shadowfiend leaves this mid lane, this tower is certainly gonna end up falling. Also, the fact that Windrazor can now walk while moving, uh, walk, walk while focus firing is actually so insane because you can. I mean, you could walk, but then firing. you'd not attack. Uh, you you can you can still attack. I mean that's a focus fire. No, you you could in the past walk as well, but you'd stop attacking. Yeah, now now you can move and attack. Yep. So, so now you can go into the trees, fire away. Not much. Yeah. Of the Basically, she she's start. upgraded her motor skills. I I mean, <laughs> she was just daft in the past, and now now she can hit and walk at the same time. Oh yeah. 
Looks like she uh, went to Zronachari and decided to get some training from him. Absolutely. Tier 1 Archer of the World. Yep, coaching Dota heroes and legends since Aeons. I'm, I'm quite convinced that uh, the elves in Drow's Woods where she was lost as a child, uh, just a low lesson, were probably Dronacharya and Arjuna. Teaching mm. Drow, Windranger, all the archers of Dota to how to use their bows. <laughs> Indeed. Um, we've took shot in the mid lane. Oh boy. Lost Rider needs a little bit of that training as well. Oh yeah. That, that, that well, was not even close. <laughs> <laughs> that was not even yeah. close. I mean, it, it, it's okay, but still, he, I think... Uh, yeah, so Lost Rider is actually starting to take up the full role a bit more. Has himself the order of shadows. This is something that T and C do very often with Tims and Sam H. They both like yep. to switch around. They both like to uh, play different roles. Um, oh. Jin, he's gonna get burst on. Yeah, he's dead. I mean, a little too much of overcommitment, but okay, they get the kill and Lost Rider, why is he in the lane? And Dreamy has his blink, 14 minutes in. Yep. Dreamy, he's got his blink. Animal, what's he stolen? He's stolen the rocket barrage. That's actually quite useful. Axel just chilling in the off lane. He's finding space, he's finding farm. Lost Rider has kind of um, neglected uh, the farm aspect on his clockwork. And Akatsuki, they're grouping up for a tier 1 tower. They've got the mass serpent boards if they need them. Uh, the Razor still hasn't moved from his lane or taken the tower and this is a bit of a problem because as a Razor, you have the advantage against side and you push it to its fullest. You go take his tower, you go invade his jungle, but uh, Tetsi seems to be doing none of that. Yeah, he isn't farming too well either. Yeah, just has a hood of defiance, 15 minutes in, not the best place to be in if you're the Razor. Idly, yeah. you won't have the drums by now along with the hood. In most situations, especially if you're up against the tide, but um, August on the high ground being chased gets the debut and ends up dying. Oh, yeah, well, Akatsuki, they've got to be oh, careful. The no. hookshot is there from Lost Rider this time, it doesn't miss the shackles. Buying time for Dreamy Axel comes in, has the ravage, but Animal with the stolen hex. Buying time, Lost Rider drops the cogs. The gush will slow him down. The wind ranger burning her own mana as the council. Get yeah, themselves I mean, the kill onto the shaman and force a rotation. Yeah, I think the problem there was uh, that they hook shot onto a sand king. Uh, as a sand king, you, you don't really care if you get hook shot because you can still power strike outside. And if uh, the clockwork cocks you and starts battery assaulting, you have the sand stop. And you can't hit invisible units with the battery assault. So Dreamy is going to be just alright if he gets hook shot. I think you're better off saving the hook shot for decoy. Wait, you can't hit invis units with battery assault, are you sure? Yeah, I'm 100% sure about that. Okay. And there's been a lot of confusion. I think uh, you should catch up with the game of Dota today. Oh, okay, the bottom lane. Well, Madara ends up falling. That's the Requiem coming out from Susmoy. His Shadow Blade securing him a double kill just 16 minutes in. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, he's, he's, he's a happy Shadow Fiend. Yeah. Taunting away. Using a shadow blade to get kills, and this is really the point where the shadow fiend starts becoming scary. Oh, but look at this, Akatsuki. They're looking for a kill. These shackles, they haven't been hitting. An animal, he's stolen the power shot. He could look to make a flashy play. Ends up stealing the bow strike, and Dreamy wants to go back in. Animal, he has moving the into the trees. Yeah, he, he should just go back to the base at this point. I, no, wait, he has the triangle, so he's gonna reach and back up. Yeah, that's the right move. Top lane, that's uh, <laughs> yet to move from his lane. Yep. I'm surprised that this Razor is still static and is not assisting his team in these fights. Yeah. As a Razor, your power spike is towards the mid game and the only... His game... power spike is now. Yep. It's it's now and there's and... never a better time to rotate, rotate than right now. He just goes to a lane, shows up, pops his ultimate and just starts firing away at the tower. So Smart. Okay, so Smart walks forward. Now August does have a sentry, will not drop it. Animal and Dreamy, they've got to be careful here. Dreamy just lurking in the trees. Will Power Strike defensively to save his own life as they do sacrifice the Shadow Shaman? The council just starting to group up. Now, Akatsuki still have the Ravage on the Tide Hunter. I'm not a fan of the Tide's itemization. He's going for a helm at 18 minutes. Yeah, it's not the best item to get. I mean, but look at this down bottom, they might find a kill. They go in, blink, Paro, Epi. All and the good stuff, shot. and with the power shot. 
They're gonna find themselves the Shadow Fiend. Now Axel is here, he's chasing for more. Doesn't really have vision. Jin will move oh, into the trees yeah. and keep out. That's... Jin should not have made up like that. I mean, you have a Sand King with Blink and a Ravage. That There's was no not a good TP game. by the Tide as well. Because yeah. he gave up a tier 1 tower by making that move and he moved to not find anything down bottom. Well, Dream is Maybe... Be... Yeah, but you... S these aren't good movements across the map, really. Look at this. Look at this, Dreamy's gonna end up falling up top. They've got the... No, no mana for the telekinesis, but that's has the damage. Oh yeah, that's with the stolen damage is gonna do a lot of work. Yeah. Finally, this Razor actually... And down bottom, hookshot coming out. August caught in the cogs, doesn't have a four staff. Will not commit the mass open wards. He could look for a war trap, but he'll commit the shackles instead. Jane ends up falling further north. There's the call down as well. So it's my with the Shadow Blade. Will match a clean up on the Shadow Shaman and Lost Rider being chased. Requiem just to zone out Dark Arts, Suki. As it uh, is a one for one trade in the bottom and lane. They'll keep running because they don't have disable. <laughs> yeah, they don't. And this is really where you start uh, questioning uh, how you're supposed to itemize if you the Shadow Fiend or the Razor. What items do I need to buy to make sure that my team has some potential to kill these heroes? I think We're getting away with murder every single time. You go Scardi on the Shadow Fiend, that's the best thing I can think of. Yeah. I think uh, the Razor can pick himself up a use, that wouldn't be too bad of an idea. Uh, also, Lost Rider can get himself something like an Atos, to be honest. And Atos, pretty yep. good against the Sand King, because it actually I think Jin could be the one building an Atos. Yep. Uh, oh. Council really want to contest the stack. That's he's picked up those drums of endurance. He wants to fight with his side. Axel doesn't have the damage. I got the Hex August walking up into the high ground. Cops a fair amount of damage. False, this is my. And the Council. Well, they'll find themselves a couple of granite golems, but that's about it. There's the epicenter coming up from Dreamy. He's got the raise of the shackles. Perfect. Both goes caught in one straight line. But Akatsuki will not pursue as their gyrocopter is a bit too low. And once again, the council, without any real catch, are struggling around the ancients. A quick power strike catching out Animal. Animal steals the power strike himself, lands it onto two. And there's the catch that we needed so badly, Floki. Animal setting up for a killing spree onto the Shadow Fiend. The hook shot. Nice, but Decoy with the 4 staff keeps his distance. Animal still chasing. Only on 200 points of health, Jin though. He's the one who can run. He's committed oh, all his drum charges. Nah, Decoy nah. moves into the trees, but that will not keep him alive. And the council do end up winning that engagement. I think... I think it's safe think... to say that the council won that fight. They contested most of the stack. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know what, Floki? We've not seen a single mass open board until now. I think it's okay to use it for these fights well. I mean, sure, but the problem is that the initiation, if you just drop the wards and then there's no stun, those wards are just gonna get farmed up. So as a Shadow Shaman, it's always a bit of a risk to place down these wards, especially if a team is a bit scared to go in and they're not confident in their ability to survive, or maybe the Sand King whips as well as strike. And then your Serpent was really get wasted and you could, you're on big back foot because Shadow Shaman's greatest strength is those Serpent wards. It's a great Axel, up, spell. up. Oh. Lost Rider Stops the battery assault Axel caught in the cogs will end up falling Yeah, so that's I was saying the Shadow Shaman's greatest strength is in his Serpent Wards He just drops them Is he able to zone out uh, heroes quite fairly well with the Serpent Wards But if there are five new heroes standing there They're just gonna turn around and farm those wards if there's no follow-up I know, so. but they're in the middle of that messy fight In one concentrated part of the map with a Sand King still alive I, I think you had to throw it out I'm pretty certain that maybe if those wards were there and if he controlled them, he would have found the Rubik at the very least. And another thing I want to point out is that the council, they are taking engagements that are not close to objectives. I mean, they're taking fights in the jungles, so I, I don't think that's the best idea. That's the best way to take fights on Dota. And Dota, idly, you want to take fights next to structures, uh, to oh, areas. Oh, so like Smoy, he sees the Shaman August. August, has the Hex, looks to run. There's Decoy. Lines up the shackle shot, he got the epicenter coming through, animal two man Baru himself, there's the epicenter, catches one versus so my pops is DKB, looks to turn, they'll bring down the wind range of the ravages there, animal dropping low, but he manages to steal the anchor smash, he's still alive, and Madara with the call down has no choice but to pop his drums and run away, decoy, along with shaman and dreamy, all of them end up falling in mid, and all of this for a gin enchantress, yeah I mean, that was such a Council favor team fight. You find Sand King, you find Wind Ranger, you also find the Shadow Shaman. 
the Sand King, I think he has more net worth than his own Tide Hunter at this point. So that was actually he a position three doesn't. Sand King. He doesn't. He doesn't. Oh, okay. He. I think that last fight probably sent him back, but. I remember that the Sand King was really, really close uh, above the Tide Hunter. But anyway, the Council, they are now posting the Tier 2 Tower. They need to back off though, they can't stay here for long. Sand King is coming back in a few seconds, and so is Wind Ranger. I think it's in the best. Uh... Well, okay. Okay, then. Looks like uh, Council, they will get away with taking um, the Tier 2 up Tower. Top, Axel. Uh, they. Wait, what? Okay, so they used the Telekinesis while he was using his TP scroll? Jin unfortunately doesn't have any more drum charges, but here comes Lost Rider, has the urn. That's even coming in with the plasma field if needed. Oh, yep. So the Wind Ranger well, is uh, starting to fall off. Yeah, the Wind Ranger is starting to fall off uh, in some aspects. She, she doesn't have a Maelstrom idly at this point. You probably want to have Maelstrom plus one item and yeah. making progress towards a third one, but Wind Ranger not had the best game. Although she is to be respected, her damage output is quite uh, insane if allowed to dish it out. It's, Especially it's when okay. Has... It, but it, with Maelstrom, it's decent to be honest. Like, she can man fight it, the it Shadow is. Fiend very easily. And finally, August drops a Sylvan Ward in the mid lane, but these wards are not going to do anything because the Creep Wave is going to clear these wards. And so is yeah. Jun. And those are the first Sylvan Wards of the game. But... Um, August, they got him out. Mass Serpent was even given away by August. This is costly. This is real, really costly for the side of Akatsuki. I mean, Animal they, they has mean, a Blink Dagger. I, I... Sorry, what is Animal picked up? Blink Dagger. A Blink. Rubik. Okay. <laughs> and now they can yeah, just drop the least. Serpent Wards and do rolls. Oh, that, those Serpent Wards actually outside the pit. That's, that's tactical, Floki. You want one ward for vision outside the pit. Yeah, that ward is right behind a tree, okay? It doesn't give you vision. It, it, it only does! Gave... Now, now they know where Madara is. No, no, Madara, Madara started attacking the ward, that's why he had vision, okay? But, yeah, so small, eh? Yeah, he used to back off. Could have died to the power shot there, uh, along with a new go yeah. from Axel. This this is a good read coming up from Akatsuki. Yeah, and, but this... uh... So open wards are doing their thing. I don't think they're going to be able to take down Roshan all by themselves. Now, Axel moves into the... He's the one giving vision. Tries to run down deaths. August there just is uh, joining his. And there's a hook shot. Lost Rider gets the fight started. Dara has the hurricane pack now, so the cogs won't bother him too much. And this is when the lock starts to become an issue. The epicenter coming through, but decoy. Or rather, Dreamy. They didn't choose to blink in. I mean, I'm not sure if his blink dagger was being cancelled by something. But yeah, yeah that's the epicenter. Probably. Not doing too much, and so smart deaths will try and work away on Roshan. Roshan does end up dropping Dreamy, blinks it, but so smart. He's got the ages, Dreamy. Got in the cog, still alive, some other ravage is there. Returned by Animal, turning things around. So smart finds himself a double. It's all gone horribly wrong for the side of the Akats for Akatsuki near Roshan, and they might end up losing August as well. Yeah, August will end up falling in. So smart finds the ages on a shadow. Animal. Feet. Animal just so patient, man. Yep. the Ravage. I mean, that's and uh, the favor. That, that's how Kuroki used to play on his Rubik, if you remember correctly. He used to always wait, always very, very patient, waiting for the RP, waiting for those big spells to pop, and only then goes in and turns things around. And yeah, the council. Look, the gyrocopter, the tide, as well as the Sand King all have buybacks, but only the Wind Ranger expended a buyback, which actually now seems kind of pointless because if they didn't intend on buying back to defend why buy back on one hero oh yeah I mean this you buy back but you don't do anything with the buyback and that's uh, cold down the drain that's no buyback for another seven and a half minutes that's also exactly I think these things cost them. you right when you're playing from behind uh, oh, the yeah. good news for decoy is that buybacks don't punish you as heavily as they once used to I mean you can see yep. that the the cost Mm -hmm. of uh, farming up unreliable gold is no more as high as it once used to be. But in so all Deco honesty, can... there's uh, actually no good news to be honest because he's still bought back at the end of the day and uh, yeah, the only but, thing but... he has working for him is that he can farm now. Without exactly. Uh, I mean, the in the previous patch, that buyback would have been extreme, a lot more costlier. It's yeah. already a costly one. Um, as long as Akatsuki don't lose a fight, and uh, the Wind Ranger doesn't need to buy back. That buyback can slide, but if they do, it could come back to hurt them. Oh yeah. 
Well, uh, the council are in the lead at the moment, but if they lose uh, another team fight, which they are likely, I mean, it's always a likely possibility when you have a Tide Hunter as well as a Sand King in the enemy team. If you lose the next team fight, Akatsuki are going to get a lot of gold, and they can just swing the momentum back into their favor. You yeah. see, the council they need to keep they need to keep the pressure up, but Akatsuki they just need one good team wipe to turn the game around. So, if Akatsuki hold on, and if they manage to find that right team fight. They can actually turn things around and possibly even take the game. Yeah. Always have to respect at, the Ravage and Sand King. Look at Axel's net worth on the Tide Hunter. Yeah, I I have a look at it. And this look at Animal's about. net worth on the Rubik. Oh boy. I mean, look at look at Jin's net worth and look at Blockworks net worth, man. The, one of them is supposed to be a support apparently, but I can't figure out who's who. I think that's only a win for the council. I mean, yeah. if 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 both your whatever three and four positions oh. are finding farm, it's it's excellent. Look at Animal's um, Animal, positioning. He's got the ravage as well. This could oh, be no, he auto, oh, attack? auto attack. He's got the auto attack enabled. They want to burst down Animal, but he gets the ravage off the council. What do they want to do with this? Death moves forward. He's going to find August. There's the hookshot from Lost Rider. Goes forward, has the cogs. There's the real ravage coming up from Axel, but they've already lost August as well as Madara and Susma. Cleans up on Axel. Dreamy with the epicenter, not doing the least. Squad has to run back home, but the spirit vessel, as well as the damage from Deaths, will force him to die and will force him to buy back. But that's with that Axe Scepter, eyes on the prize. He'll take down the melee barracks, G -G. move on to the range. And uh, Katsuki, they're going to end up tapping out. I mean, Susmoy butterfly 30 minutes in on a Shadow Fiend. How do you really stop him from heading away at your foes? Yeah, they... I don't know. They, they had... They had the better draft, but... Council just outplaying them. Axel, he's got to take a look at... Uh, Keeping his farm going. Uh, yeah, he also issues, should probably look issues. back and see some of the decisions he made, particularly the decision to stick around against Razor in the lane. You don't want to do that as a Tide Hunter. You just want to defend your lane, make sure your tower doesn't fall, and farm the jungle in the meanwhile, because, and force enemies to rotate and shut you down as it takes space away. But if you just keep dying to the Razor 1v1 or you just keep getting zoned out, you yourself don't get anything, and your team is now forced to respond every single time the Razor dies the tower. So. It puts Akatsuki in a very bad spot. So a couple of key decision-making mistakes by Akatsuki. I think that's what they're going to have to take away from this game. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, Floki, he's vying for a slot on the analyst panel himself, nearly forcing himself upon Angela and Bagish. But I'm going to throw it over to the real analyst desk. Angela and Bagish, all yours. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back again, live with the studio segment of the ESL India Premiership 2018 Summer Season Masters League. Wow, that was long. Did I forget 2018? No, oh, I, you said I, that. I, I said that. And all of this has been brought to you by Omen by HP, HyperX and Intel. And the lovely peeps of Northern Gaming and ESL India presenting it to you, which is basically me, Angela, and sometimes Gotham Workaholic Work. Because like I said, Northern Gaming people are shy of cameras. Anything else, they'll just go head on like the hog rider of Clash Royale. But this is not about Clash Royale. Yeah. This is so much more. I was backing the council. That I, I, Angie, the battle yeah. was halfway won in the draft. Uh, yeah, actually the battle was won halfway in the draft. But there are a few pointers that have changed this game quite a bit. First Please. of all, uh, when we talk about Jin, we usually think he's a pro on the Chen. But actually he played fantastic on that Enchantress. More than anybody else in this game, I would give him the MVP. Because his rotations were so on point. Even though he just was on the bottom lane, he made sure that he had the gyrocopter ganked on more than once, twice, but three times. And that is quite well played. If you talk about one support, just making sure that the carry doesn't get a lot of farm, he made sure about that. But also the same Mukatsuki in the first 10 minutes of the game, beautiful rotations. I mean, from their previous games that they have been struggling so much, today it was more of a redeem point for them. They redeemed themselves completely. They made sure that even though it was just 10 minutes, there were about 22 kills on the map. And that means that all of them have rotated well. Both the supports made sure in specific i would say both the supports including august and dreamy they both made sure that they kind of got the gangs off on the mid hero the sf got ganked they made sure that the off lane got ganked but worked well for them but now where they started losing was when the towers started to have to fall and akatsuki were not even able to take down one tower and when you don't take down towers in a game like dora 2 you don't get that much gold 
and when you don't get that much goal net worth of your opponents goes higher and higher and as the game proceeds your supports become weaker and weaker and that's basically what happened to akatsuki it was not like they didn't play well they played really well but the objective dota was played more by the council and another turning point in the game was this rabbit stolen by the rubik at the rosh pit he made sure that that was like the nail on the coffin that needed to be put on akatsuki and he did beautifully the ravage popped he kind of counter ravaged that and after that akatsuki knew that there was nothing more they could do to kind of win this fight for them the sf of course another player who played really really well he got his bkb up on time he had that shadow blade to make sure that you know he's rotating freely and that's why council took the game and akatsuki it's not like they didn't play well and i have to keep repeating this because they played well it was just not enough and being in the masters league you have to be more than just enough to be able to defeat good teams true true i yeah. I, i most certainly agree with you on that point anji Well ladies and gentlemen that brings us to the end of today's stream this amazing game of Dota 2 is also ended and now we'll be back again with you guys tomorrow same time same place except unless and until you have not pressed if you have not pressed that bell icon button or subscribe button then you will be left out alone in the cold without any esports to warm you up well for the others join the join the bandwagon man because you are the lovely people because you chose to press the bell icon and the subscribe button so my upvote to you guys but that sums it up for today i'm your host wagish godslebhan and i'm zara angela gonzalez and we'll be coming back again tomorrow